Hello and good evening once again. Aladadi here at Ask the Gynecologist, and I want to welcome you all to this uh, ATG show tonight. Sorry, I couldn't come up live as early as I wanted. I was waiting for a phone call from one of our platinum uh, members, and uh, it was a wonderful time to speak with her and her husband. Uh, she uh, resides in Ibadan, and uh, it was a wonderful time. And uh, I'm happy whenever I speak with couples, especially. My, the, the wife and the husband i'm always excited because uh it's uh, it's a blessing to be able to make an impact in people's lives consistently and uh, the only thing i can say is i'm grateful to god almighty for being in this position to be able to touch people's lives as much as i can in wonderful ways so i'm grateful to god and for you as well watching me tonight i want to say thank you so much for spending part of your time and data to be here uh, to listen to me uh, clearly we are live simultaneously on instagram and also on facebook and once again i want to introduce myself to you all my name is dr babaji dialalade one of your admins at ask the gynecologist and it's my pleasure to be your host tonight today i'll be talking about hsg the almighty hsg that people dread and people fear all the time hsg as you're aware is hysterosarpingogram i talked about this topic over the weekend and i was differentiating between what hysteroscopy is what hsg is and what hysterosonogram is as well so that people understand uh, the reason why i chose that topic was because i put up a post over last week and i could see the confusion and also the difficulty for people to understand that hsg is entirely different from other forms of investigations that we do in gynecology so i can see people coming up live and see moshi bolaton 14. she was here yesterday listening to me moshi bolaton thank you so much for being here on instagram favor Marco, thank you so much strictly yummy thank you guys and people watching us on on facebook anna Chid and chidima og light uhak and my wonderful mommy although she's also here as well my wonderful mommy she's my mother and she's watching here live as well. I can see Melako Pereba, one of our wonderful ATG Foundation members. And Melako, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to uh, see you here again. It's a wonderful time. Thank you so much. Uh, Lex Queen on Instagram. I can see uh, Chocolate Beauty. Good evening, Cecil Brown and James, one of our wonderful ladies. I always respect this lady. She's massive. She's wonderful. She's full of so much enthusiasm and love for ATG. Thank you, Cecil, for being here um so once we, i think we have a sizable crowd i'll start so if i've missed your name please forgive me uh aniete udo ayene fatima tu ujong victoria merio ene ifama ye fama ye oke bono isioma musa ramatu christina odumo ye momogalu totten uh we have uh four years diamond thank you for years you can hear me loud and clear thank you for for years for giving me that test testing uh tin tin bar 38 on instagram thank you uh cecil Vance says she needs my cap yes i'm going to get you a similar cap as a gift whenever i visit nigeria cecil i'm going to get you this cap thank you so much uh, thank you for that comment identity addition ayilara agata ikene idu and your fellow ajibola florence ade and uh, we have um if you or be uh, sorry this thing is moving fast so i can't really get all the names so if i've missed your name please apologies once again my name once again with all pleasure is Bakalala day and i'll be talking about hsg today i know on instagram you can't see my white board up completely so i'm going to probably move the um settings so that you can see my white board sorry uh that um mm, what I call it? my phone came up off the rack here on instagram so anyway i don't want to waste too much time i'm going to start talking shortly so uh since we have a sizable crowd i will start talking shortly okay and uh, if you're greeting me uh oputa odinakachi odinakachi chitema uguma josephine jonathan uh grace Benyowu, identical additional before we start as people are gathering here let me just talk about some few things that uh i uh you know got you know got my attention over the last few hours on atg you know i put up a post where i said uh, if you buy something you spend money if you sell something you get money but if you invest invest money your money grows and people were asking me questions about what should they invest in with time i've realized that there's a misconception on what investment is 
amongst us Nigerians and what investment is not, what gambling is and what gambling is not. Investment and gambling, okay, investment and uh, risky uh, investments, I'll put it in quotes, there's a fine line between both of them. Most things that people call investment in Nigeria is actually gambling, okay? What makes investment different from gambling is that investment is measured risk. But if you want to do any business, you always take calculated risk. We want to take away the element of calculated risk from anything you're doing, even if it seems to be investment, it becomes gambling. And how do you, what do you know about calculated risk? You have to sit down and analyze, gather information, know more about what you're doing. If something appears to be an investment and you cannot understand it, then don't do it. Even if it looks good, it's not for you. So when people ask me, okay, doctor, what can you invest in? Let me tell you something. I've been a doctor for almost 18 to 19 years. And I've been also trading stocks, forex, options for almost 12 years now. So I think I'm a professional in both. And sometimes I don't trade in the market. I watch the market. Sometimes I step in. Sometimes I step out. I've helped people to manage their funds over a long period of time. And by the grace of God, I've not had a loss for myself and for them. Sometimes I, I mean, when I say a loss is that overall, when I look at the whole span of my, me managing their funds for them, overall, cumulatively, there's not been a loss. But once in a while, I make loss, like any business entity we do in life. Once you cannot do or measure your calculated risk in anything you're doing, then it becomes gambling. When people ask me on that post, that, okay, what should you invest in? I can never tell you what you should invest in. If you're waiting for me to tell you, okay, invest in this particular thing, invest in that particular thing, that means that you've not done your job. You've not done your own work. Even if I suggest something to you, you should go and do your own thorough homework in that thing I've said before you choose it or before you, you dabble into it. I'm still going to start hosting classes on how to do investments and, how, and also how to trade because I've had, by the grace of God, I know a lot about trading and I know a awful lot and I, I know a good lot. So I'm, I'll be trying to you know, share that knowledge at some point to people, with people, because there's no use you having knowledge that you can share it. So once in a while, we start hosting classes for people that want to learn how to trade stocks market, how to trade forex market, so they can learn a lot. Now, the typical thing Nigerians do, or we do in Nigeria, is you want to put maybe one Naira or two Naira in a particular MMM fund, and you want to get maybe 40 Naira within the next 24 hours. That is gambling. That is stupidity. Nothing works that way. Even if you put your money and buy the government bonds in America or in, in China, Nobody will give you such a return within such time. So if anybody is promising you such things, they are just lying to you. Okay? So before you invest your money that you've worked out hard for, be careful. It's a, an unfortunate thing that you see people work so hard for money. But when it's time to invest, they can easily trust their money to somebody that does not even know what they are doing. People will easily and willingly hand their hard-earned money to people that don't even know what they are doing. And suddenly, their money goes away. They say, ah, oh, I didn't know. And all of a sudden, everything becomes common sense. Anything you want to invest in that you cannot explain to a 10-year-old to a, to a, to a, 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 a primary six person, you don't know. It's not going to work. I remember when I was in Form 1, when I was in GS1 then, in 1989, January or February precisely, I was about 10 or 11 years old then. And so they, they were doing this MMM thing then. And somebody so spoke to me to get into it. And I told them, can you explain this thing to me? They told me everything. I said, this thing doesn't make sense to me. Can you t tell me again? I'm like, it doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, people bought those things. They used to call it uh, something bonds then. All of a sudden, they, they, they didn't bring me the paper back from me. But then I was schooling in, in a boom or shop. FGC Boomer Show, Father College Boomer Show. They didn't bring the something and people lost their money. I'm like, this thing doesn't sound or make sense to me anyway. So when I hear people doing investment and the thing that comes to their mind is MMM, all those things, I'm like, you are joking. These things will happen again. Whenever the economy, economy is depressed, people are so stressed and they are so uh, eager to get returns for their mega funds, 
419 fraudsters come and they tell them to part with their money and people easily part with their money that they've worked out for. But some people even go and borrow money and take loans from banks to put in MMM. How daft can I be? Apologies. I'm just saying my mind. But now, let's go back to our med medical part, which is my first profession. Today, we'll be talking about HSG, okay? Over the weekend, I discussed about HSG, okay? And good evening, Barry Sochima. Good evening, Vivian Dico Briggs. Good evening, Anisegwe Mwamaka Lillian. Chisom Chigbo, if you seen Imoshi, Amari Amandi, Tell Links 2000, Cecil Brown. I can see you guys. So I'm going to start talking about this topic for tonight. Over here behind me, you see a sample of the womb, a drawing of the womb. I think there's so much, so much glare and there's so much uh, reflection from on the screen. So I think you can see much of the womb now. HSG itself, okay, is designed to check if there's blockage in the tubes or not. HSG is designed to check if there's blockage in the tubes or not. HSG can be very, very painful, can be very, very uncomfortable. And a lot, a lot of women that go for HSG, they complain and they tell their friend that it's painful, it's the worst pain you can ever experience, blah, blah, blah. They are actually right. But some people say, HSG is okay for me, I don't even feel much pain, so easy, so blah, blah, blah. They are also right. Everybody has a different side and perception of the things or what they've gone through, okay? So don't entirely believe people because people have different thresholds for pain. People have different thresholds for other issues they are going through. What you've gone through that was seemingly painless for you could be excruciatingly uncomfortable and painful to other people. So HSG is primarily designed to check if there's block tube or not. So don't think HSG is to unblock block tubes. It is to know if there's blockage or not. Yes, I've seen few cases, some few percentage of people that they have blockage in their tubes. And when we are doing the HSG, there could be so some for example now let us go here there's that tube and there's a tiny debris or some particles in the tube maybe some old menstrual loss that was hiding there and causing tiny 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 tiny, tiny blockage there okay i think can I, can everybody see my drawing good so so people have some tiny tiny uh blockage there in their uh, tube like that okay 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 it, the tube is not entirely blocked, but we call it you know, maybe old menstrual blood, tiny blood particles, tiny blood clot, you know, is this small, small, small stuff like that. They are blocking the tube like that. And because of that, the hair cannot move. The egg comes over, gets stuck, it can't move again, it gets, uh, you know, the hair dies and is absorbed in, into the body. So during HSG, okay, maybe the same thing is happening too on the other side too. So during HSG, we use a and dye it looks like water is some iodine dye like that it goes in through your vagina under a catheter into your womb cavity goes into the tube on that, that side tube on this side okay and if there's a blockage there it flushes it eats away and suddenly the tubes become open i've seen people get pregnant shortly after their hsg that is the truth okay and they could be lucky that there was a tiny blockage there that was totally dislodged unblocked by the hsg definitely true okay but if you know you have blocked tubes <laughs> and you've been told you have blocked tubes and you say okay hey, they've done hsg for me i've been told that i have blocked tubes i want to go and do hsg again to unblock my tube my sister you are, you are joking i know in nigeria we like shortcuts i'm a nigerian too i understand but it doesn't work that way if you do things the way they are not done you're going to get things the way they are they're not supposed to be done that is number one now, before you go for HSG, you need to know a few things so that you don't cause, mo cause much damage to your body. One second. I'm just trying to go through some few things here. Good. So you need to know this. HSG can be potentially dangerous, can, can be potentially painful. Before you go for HSG, there must be a time you have to go for it. You can't just go do HSG at any time. You can't just do HSG at any time of your cycle. First of all, I'm a doctor. You might be pregnant. I don't want to push the contrast HSG dye, this blue line, into your womb cavity if there's a pregnancy that is there already. So before HSG, definitely, I want to know that you're not pregnant. 
So when, and how, how, how do I know this? Simple, I'll tell you. You need to abstain from sex at least two to three weeks before coming for HSG. So if you've been told that you need HSG, okay, abstain from sex, no sex, because we don't want you to get pregnant and they will not do HSG and they will not cause wahala by pouring a contrast dye, iodine dye, into your wound cavity when you could be pregnant. So the first things first is that we tell you once you've started your period, day one of your period, call the doctor or call the x-ray department, call the lab, call your the, 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 um, the lab. Oh, lab people, oh, manager of lab, oh, I have seen my first period. I've seen my first, my first day of period. I'm bleeding now. I need to come for my HSG. When can I come? So once you've, you've told them that, that means at least you, we know that you're not pregnant. But you could, you could still be pregnant too. So once you've seen that, okay, obviously abstain from sex two weeks before that, they will tell you to come for HSG. The purpose of HSG is that we want to do your HSG between the first day of your period and oh, please guys, hold your question. Let me finish talking, okay? Please, I beg you. We want to do HSG between the first day of your period and before you ovulate. Or before we or at least before we expect you to ovulate. So the idea is that HSG must be done between the first day of your period and before you ovulate. So once we've known that, okay, yes, yeah, so you start you start start starting your period, we call you in and tell you to come in around maybe between day five and day nine of your cycle, get your HSG done. The good thing about you coming in when you just finishing your period on day five is that your cervix, which is the neck of your womb, is still slightly open. And it's very easy for me, for us to pass the catheter. We pass a tiny rubber, tiny catheter. You know that bio, uh, big bio we use in Nigeria, that in, 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 inside of the bio pen, that you see that blue ink or black ink or red ink, that tiny thing, that is the similar size of the catheter we're pushing, we put in through your cervix that goes in. So that thing goes in, okay, and it, and it, it, it we're now pushing the contrast dye into it, okay, and the dye will pour like water into your womb, okay. Now that dye we're pushing in contains iodine, okay. That is why if you have any allergy to anything, let them know. I know in Nigeria we, we don't really know what allergy we have, okay. It's always important to know. I remember. I used to be allergic to a particular yam. I don't even know whether I am. I've eaten so many yams in my life, but there's a particular yam I ate when I was in GS2 in 1990, and I itched all over, and my body was swollen, okay? And I remember when I was in year four in medical school around 1999 or 1998, I also ate a particular yam with friends in school, in school and I was itching. That was at Idiaraba, but I, I wasn't swollen like the first time I, 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 I was itching in 1990. So I was just itching on my skin and it went away. So everybody has a particular allergy. Everybody, as far as you're in this world, you're exposed to something, you're allergic to something. So you need to know what you're allergic to. So if you're allergic to iodine uh, dye, let the doctor know so that we, 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 we find a way of doing this and don't use iodine dye. If you're allergic to iodine dye, let the doctor know. It's also important, like I said again, that when you see your first day of bleeding, let the department know. So if Day, this is day one of your bleeding, okay? Day two, day three, day four. By end of day four, your period would have ended. So we now take, once, once you call us on day one of your bleeding, we now count to day four. We now tell you to come for HSG from day five to around day nine, okay? Day five to around day nine. So we now tell you to come in from day five to around day nine or even to around day 10. That's okay. But day nine is very good. One second. So we not tell you to come in around the, uh, you know, usually around day nine. I'll put it around day nine. So, but if it falls on the weekend, we can bring you in at, as soon as possible. So that is the first thing you must know. Before you go for HSG as well, we need to do your swabs, your eye vaginal swab, your endocervical swab to know that you got no infection. Because if some infection, mm -hmm, they are hiding, okay, around your vagina there. You're hiding jet jelly in your vagina like that. You're hiding jet jelly there. Mm? We don't want to push them in whenever we're putting in the catheter. And now push the infection into your own cavity. And then the infection will now cease down the jet 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 jet. And they'll start causing wahala. And they'll multiply. And they will now move into your tube to go and cause extra damage. 
So we want to do vaginal swab. So it's important that you do vaginal swab. If you're not sure of the result they've given to you from your vaginal swab, then just take azithromycin, one gram, on the day of your HSG to prevent any infection. In fact, I tell people in Nigeria now, if you're going for HSG, on the day of your HSG, take azithromycin antibiotics, okay, to prevent infection. Now, if your tubes is, are blocked, azithromycin is not going to unlock or unblock your tube. So don't, see, half knowledge is always dangerous. So please listen attentively, oh. I didn't say that this, oh. Azithromycin is not to unblock your tubes. It is to prevent infection that could be hiding your vagina from causing massive infection if they are invariably accidentally moved into your womb cavity during the HSG. So azithromycin antibiotics, one gram orally at one go. Okay, that's that. Number two. On the day of your HSG, we always and we should do a test of pregnancy. You must do test of pregnancy. If they don't do it for you, you do it yourself and do it reliably. We don't <clears throat> want to mistakenly push in the iodine dye into your womb cavity if there's a pregnancy there. We don't want to cause miscarriage of a precious baby that you've been looking for. It's paramount, it's important, it's a, not a joke. They must do a test of pregnancy. Now, the most important thing is that H HSG can be very painful. HSG can be painful. I'll tell you the truth. I do HSG for about five patients every week. And out of those five, two will be okay. Three will have pain. So that's about 60% of people that go for HSG will have pain. It doesn't matter if you've done it before. If, you know, if, you, if you've done it before, you can still have pain from HSG. And the reason why we have pain... People having pain from HSG is that when the contrast is being pushed in to the womb cavity, okay, the contrast will now flow into your tubes and pour into your tummy on left side and on right side. And it pours into your tummy. You now wonder, okay, what's going to happen with this contrast that is pouring into your tummy? The body reabsorbs it. But while it's going out, we take x-ray. And on x-ray, we will see the contrast spill out into your tummy like that, like that, like that. We see it spill out into your tummy either side, okay? That shows that the that shows that the tubes are not blocked, and that's reassuring, encouraging. If the contrast does not flow out, okay, and I can see it uh, spilling out, okay, and I can see the contrast co collecting maybe in the tubes or the tubes are swollen, then it means that the tubes are blocked. While the HSG is being done and the contrast is flowing out into your tummy and it's, it can cause discomfort, you know? Our tummy does not have, our tummy, inside our tummy does not have nerve supply. The main nerve supply for muscle bulk movement is to your limbs, hand and legs, you know, to your facial muscles, okay? Maybe to part of your legs because we call those muscles striated muscle. There are also some muscles in your body that are also muscles, but we call them smooth muscles. They are not under your own control. Like the muscle that are around your intestine, your muscle in your womb, your muscle inside your body and all that, in your, around your blood vessels, you don't control them. They are under what we call autonomic nervous control, under the control of God, okay, essentially, or your soul, your mind, your brain, your central nervous system. So... Those muscles, which are the same muscles around your womb, around your tummy, you can't control them. Whenever anything irritates them, they cause vague pain and you have cramps in your tummy. That is what happens during HSG. That is why I tell people, if you're going for HSG, it's always important. Don't hesitate, first of all. Don't let the fear of pain stop you. But you can do something to mitigate the pain. Take some painkillers like paracetamol. If you have access to codeine, take codeine painkillers or ibuprofen if you're not asthmatic or voltrol if you're not asthmatic they help to reduce pain and perception of pain if you're going for hsg and if you're not pregnant obviously you can also use boscopan shortly after i've seen people when they have hsg they feel so faintish they can even faint during the procedure or even faint out after the procedure from the pain so don't think you have to collect some medals if you are in pain or you think you might not be tolerant to pain Take some painkillers before the HSG or even afterwards to make your body comfortable and make sure you're fine. If you're going for HSG, always go with someone. 
don't go on your own because if you go on your own, you you you, you drove your car there, or you're going to take the cab, cab or bus back home. It's not a good idea. Let someone go with you just in case you're in so much pain, you feel dizzy, you can't look after yourself. Somebody's always with you, essentially an adult. If you can't get somebody to follow you, probably you need to consider getting it done very early at your or at your X-ray center and possibly get some rest an hour or two before going home so that you are able to know what you're doing, you're fully conscious, the pain is well managed and you're, and you're, you know, you're okay. Now, after HSG, okay, or shortly after HSG, that fluid we, we, that we use to, to, you know, to, to, to push into your tummy, into your diet, to see the tubes, will flow out. And after HSG, you see some people, they, they, have, they are still wet. That fluid can be very sticky as well and can be very, very messy. So have a pad with you. In most X-ray centers, they will give you a pad to hold, a pad to hold, to put under, okay, to prevent that fluid coming out from staining your underwear. Uh, take a pad there. If they don't give you a pad, you have your own pad to put there. So that at least when the fluid is coming out by the force of gravity, which is normal, it will not stain your underwear. Get a pad when you're going there or get some, 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 some panty liner to soak up the uh, excess HSG contrast dye or fluid that is coming out. After HSG, you might have some bleeding, okay? Some dark bleeding or some pink bleeding for some few days, a week to two. It's not uncommon. Some people, it's only a day and they're fine. But if you have blood, you know, like some light, like the end or beginning of a period coming out of your vagina for the first one or two days or three days after your HSG, it's normal. Okay, it can even persist for up to a week or two. The most important thing is that the pain in your tummy is getting less and lesser. There's no offensive smell in your vagina and the blood stain is getting clearer and clearer every day. That means it's okay. Okay, so, so, so but if your bleeding is getting more and more, the pain is getting worse, there's offensive discharge, then there's a chance that you might have infection already been introduced into your womb cavity or probably the car catheter that was used has already perforated your womb, okay? It's very rare, but it can happen, very rare. So, you need to be aware of it. The HSD doesn't take more than half an hour itself. The whole procedure doesn't take more than half an hour, even less in most places, okay? Now, I've seen a lot of people, they've done HSG, and they get results, they say that, oh, they have, their tubes are blocked. They now go for another HSD, maybe two or three months down the line, somewhere else, and they say, oh, there's no blockage in the tubes. It's what we call false negative that is to say hsg was negative no fluid came out because the tubes were blocked but it's false it's wrong it can happen it can happen because of what we call tubal spasm so when, when, whenever we're pushing this uh, uh, contrast hsd dye into your into your excuse me so whenever we are, we are pushing the country the contrast dye i put in in blue here Okay. Whenever the contrast dye is going into your womb cavity and it's going through all the way through like that into your tubes, it can irritate the tubes. Okay, it can make your tube irritated. Like when you touch an an earthworm moving on the soil on a rainy day, suddenly the earthworm will stop because it's in shock that will touch me. Okay, the same thing too. The tubes behave the same way. Once the dye goes into the tube. It can cause what we call tubal spasm. So the tube goes into a state of shock. Bam! And it's, you know, it becomes frozen, contracted. There's muscle. I mean, sorry, there are muscles around the tube. We, we call, like I said again, we call those muscles smooth muscles. They are not under your control. It's not because of you or anything. So because you have tubal spasm, it does not mean that you are the one that caused it. It's just because of the way the tubes are. The tubes are made up of what we call smooth muscles. And sometimes, whenever there's a dye or any, any, anything we call foreign body, something that is not part of the body, you it taste them, they go into shock. And the dye cannot flow through. And it gives us what we call a false negative. It can happen in one third of cases. So if you have 10, 10 people coming for HSG, one or two of them will have tubal spasm. In such cases, it's worthwhile to repeat the HSG. I know it's painful. You say, what? Doctor, repeat what? Yes, because I've seen people giving me HSG reports. Yes, it happened two weeks ago. This lady did HSG somewhere and she was told that there was blockage. She repeated HSG again and she was told that there's no blockage. How 
miraculous. Our God is. Thank God for that. There's a question here by Pat John. He's saying that how long does it take to get results from laboratory? I haven't got my results. I'm presuming that Pat John did a lab test at ATG Laboratories. There are two things why you can't get your results from ATG Laboratory. Probably you've not balanced your money. Okay. Number two is that if you've balanced your money, probably you've not requested for it. Okay. And number three is that we send your result to your email or to your WhatsApp number. Probably you gave your wrong WhatsApp number. So it's either of the three. So if you've not received your result and you've paid your full money, call them tomorrow morning. Nike, uh, Miss, Mrs. Yemi Beckes, whoever is there that picks up your phone. I've not received my result. Say it politely though. Don't shout on them. I've seen people come to my laboratory and they are very rude to staff. I don't know why. You don't have to be rude to people. Okay, Nikki, I've not received my result. Oh, she will check your profile. Have you paid complete payment? Yes. They'll send it to you. They'll ask you for your correct number. Probably you gave it a wrong number. Maybe. Maybe you gave a wrong email. Maybe. Maybe you've not finished your result, uh, your payment. Maybe. Or probably you've not even asked for it. But ideally, they'll send it to you once, you, once they are done. Okay? Thank you, Pat John, for using our laboratories if you use that laboratory. Now, if you have any test to be done, your infertility test, you can walk to the ATT lab, laboratory and they'll get the test done for you. And if, once you've done your test at the ATT laboratory for infertility or anything, they will, the lab staff will tell you how to get your results to me and I'll review them free of charge because they were done at the ATT labs consistent. And our laboratory now, we now have an IVF center. So if you need an IVF done to get pregnant, let's get it done in-house where we can manage things okay whether you want to do ivf you want to do family balancing you want to do uh hysteroscopy to look into your womb cavity you 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 you, you want to do uh iui and you, you, want to, you want to do gender selection whatever you call it you know we can get it done at the atg laboratory okay thank you guys so pat john call them tomorrow morning and get your result god bless you i don't have your results with me because uh i don't have your results with me Okay, but once they've given it to you, you forward it to me. The principle I've laid down with our staff is that once you get your result, you can send it to me or you can take it anywhere else that you want to take it to. So the first thing first is that the, the, the lab staff don't send the results to me. They send it to you because it's your own. You paid for it, but you had end money. They send it, send it all to you and you can give it all to me if you want to look at it as soon as possible. Now, number two, our laboratory, we don't do HSG for now. The reason is that there's no space. We've gotten the in in machine, but we have to create a space. So we're trying to create space, okay, for a portable machine. So that's the problem. But for now, to complement the HSG, we have a stereoscopy machine. So we can do a stereosonogram for you to scan you and check the tubes as well while doing the scan at our office now. So a stereosonogram, that is a stereoscopy and uh, scan, can be done. It's less painful, it's more detailed, and gives you full information. Our laboratory is in Lagos and Lagos only. Okay, it's difficult to open labs and branches all over Nigeria because money to manage lab even from Lagos while I'm here is not a joke. Okay, and we also have high DF center as well, and we're still running the promotion. So if you want, you want to get pregnant as soon as possible, you're trying to get pregnant and it's not happening your way, don't do. If you want to marry a young lady, maybe you just want, want, want to check that you're all okay there are tests you must do before you embark on the journey of marriage you don't want one sister-in-law or one brother-in-law to start chasing you out of your husband's house because you can't get pregnant prevent crying prevent that attic get your body checked before you get married now back to hsg um i think i've actually covered most of the things i need to cover from hsg now hsg is not designed to diagnose if you have endometriosis or not HSG is not designed to diagnose if you have ovarian cysts. No. HSG is designed to check if there's blockage in the tubes or not. Okay? Happiness Inam is asking about cost for gender selection. That is it negotiable? Uh, it's not... I, 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 I'm sure they gave you cost about 950 So, uh, we can give you a discount. But we can't. We don't negotiate it anymore. We can give you a discount. Okay? So, once you talk to Nikkei, uh, they've given you the, your bill then we can, I can give you a discount, okay? I can't give you a discount on the screen, okay? But if you desire, you want to move, and you want to take that next step to get pregnant, you want to do family balancing, you decided to pay. If you want a discount, tell Nikkei you want my number, or Nikkei, you can give her a um, link to let me know that you want a discount, and I'll give you a, a, a discount to you. 
So that will cover the negotiation. There's a question here by Anime. She wants to some consult for six months package and she wants to pay with euro payment. Annie, Mary, you can do that. So send a message to one of our moderators, okay? They'll contact you now. That is for Annie Mary. Can somebody contact Annie Mary and uh, I will pass the link for you to subscribe with euro payment to one of to our moderator and they'll get it to you, okay? Good evening, doctor. What are the chances of having bilateral adosapens with right tuber blockage? First of all, if you have bilateral adosapens, that means that your tubes are swollen on both sides. That is the meaning of bilateral adosapens. And that means that the tubes are blocked. So if you have bilateral adosapens, most cases, 80% of the time, your tubes are blocked. So I think I've already answered that question. If you have bilateral adosapens, there's 80% chance that the, the both tubes are blocked anyway. How much is HSG? I don't honestly know. Can you talk about ruptured ectopic pregnancy? Jennifer, yes. We'll talk about ectopic pregnancy at our next talk, maybe tomorrow. So attend tomorrow's talk, okay? We'll talk about ectopic pregnancy then, okay? And you want to hear about ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Good. That is ATG topic tomorrow. So come tomorrow. We also have a seminar happening at the end of this month for male and female fertility boots. If you're trying to get pregnant, it's not happening for you. You're trying to get married, you're going to get married soon. It's a must that you attend that seminar. Before you get married, you don't want to get married without having problems. You have to get this information. Fatima Abbas is asking for the number of the laboratory. Please, Nick, uh, Gloria, or any, any of our, mod our moderators, can you help me give Fatima Abbas the number for the laboratory? Good evening, doctor. What is the meaning of bilateral colonal tuber block? With you try and change this consistent with fibroids. That means that probably you have fibroids very very close to the um, to the uh, to the uh, to the tubes. So uh, sorry, apologies for that. Kono. Mm, let me clean all this up. So so when you hear Kono, Kono is horn. Cone is horn in Latin. That means that we are talking and we are referring to this part of the tube somewhere here, where the tube meets the wall of the womb somewhere here. Okay, so probably you have uh, fibroids around there and it's occluding or blocking your tube. Okay, and I think you said, I can't see your question anymore, but I think you said that you have uh, bilateral. So probably you have two fibroids on both sides and they are blocking your tube. Okay. Thank you guys, Gloria, for this. Uh, thank you for replying, Fatima. Yes, there's a question here on Instagram by I am BBC. She's asking, do we do donor? Yes, we do donor eggs. How much is IVF from Tessie? If you're going for IVF, okay, and you're using your own egg and your own sperm for your, your husband, straightforward IVF is 1.1 million. If you pay tomorrow before the end of this week, we charge you only 1 million. But you will cover the cost of your of your medications, of your drugs, or IVF drugs. So whenever it's time for you to use your drugs or to get drugs, we'll supply you with a list of drugs that you need. Okay? And we'll get you two quotations from two different pharmacy suppliers. They'll give you two quotations. You choose the one that works for you. Or you can even take the quotation or the list of drugs outside. You can purchase them and bring them on your own. And we administer it. But for the IVF itself, the procedure, we charge you one million if you pay before the end of this week. Okay. Now, if you need egg donor, you need sperm donor, you need any other thing, gender selection, family balancing, and other things like that, egg freezing, they are separate charges. I don't have them in my brain like this thing. Eh? So for those charges, call our ITG ATG IVF center tomorrow morning, and my secretaries will give you the cost and the full details. Okay. I doctor, my HSG says bilateral patent tubes. Bilateral patent tubes means that your tubes are not blocked. Somebody is saying that what is the best way to cure bilateral varicocid in men? We do varicocelectomy for the men, okay? That is for Smith Ife Olua Rabiu. Thank you guys for joining me today. I need to go off now. I'll quickly take some more questions, okay? Then I'll sign out of this page, okay? So uh, I think I've answered some questions on Instagram here. Let's go, go, go. Okay. Somebody said that they call IVF children microwave children. People call people different things. Some people call people like me that are bigged, bigged. Some people call children that from IVF, microwave, test to baby. Whatever they call, call them, they are babies. And their destiny is in the hands of God, okay? And children from IVF, they don't wonders. And they are billionaires today. So, whether it's microwave baby, you can call it anything you want to call it. 
children are children and they are gifts from God. Okay? Nobody needs to know how you conceive your baby. Nobody needs to know your story. You know your story. You show forth your fruits. And fruits speaks for a tree. If you see a tree that has no fruits, you walk past. But if you see a tree that has fruits, you eat of the tree. So your babies are your fruits. Okay? So why you get your fruits is nobody's business. Even if it's adoption, it's nobody's business. So on Instagram, Joy Ubana, IVF children are not microwave, microwave babies. They are children of destiny. Children with greatness and children with packed action and destiny in them. Okay? So forget that rubbish. Okay? They are children of God. Children are children and they are powerful tools in your quiver. Okay? You be coming with your auntie, doctor, alugo, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon at the ATGIDF Center. Tagba Abusi, God bless you. Thank you. Adeba Wale Kemi Adewa. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you. You're all beautiful. And I love your comments. God bless you. You guys give me that energy. I came back from work today. I was exhausted. And uh, my wife took a picture of me while I was working on some paperwork. And I posted that picture on our page. I was working and doing some calculations on how to uh, you know, ensure that everything is working smoothly. ATG is sponsored by the ATG Women's Foundation. The ATG Women's Foundation is the overall harm now of ATG. And we have our IDF center in ATG. We have our own uh, ATG laboratories now. We're also up, coming up with other things as well, which you'll be amazed to. And we are working tirelessly to improve the lives of people all over the world, starting from Nigeria. People are coming from IVF in, in ATG IVF center all the way from America, Nigeria, Italy, other states in Ghana, you know, from Ghana, is amazing. Amazing. Somebody is saying that, what is the meaning of both tubes faintly outlined? So basically, the, the dye went through, but they are not sure. If they are not sure, then they repeat the HSG. Or they should not put confusing comments. Faintly outlined is, is either it's outlined or not. If they are not sure, they should repeat it. All right? Or they should do instead of sonogram. Thank you, uh, uh, Arinze. I can see you, uh, Arinze, my wonderful Munachi Arinze. I love you so much. Thank you, sister, for visiting us at uh, ATG IVF, um, at ATG Laboratories recently. Uh, it's always happy. I'm always happy to see you come up live listening to me. It's a pleasure. And uh, you, know, you, uh, you won't know how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Arinze. God bless you. And God will crown your efforts and your business with more grace. Where do I send my email to for the consult package? So, Annie Mary is asking our email. Please, moderators, can you help me give Annie Mary our email link to send our payment, whatever, I think payment or so, to the, um, to the uh, service. Okay, let's scroll down here to Instagram and get more questions. There's a question here from, uh, she wants to know how much is for donor. For donor, I don't have the cost on my head, like I said again, but call my office, our ATGIV center tomorrow morning. And Nike or Yemi Becky, she'll give you the cost. She'll give you the cost of uh, the donor eggs. There's a question here. Look at me, asking um, how painful is HSG? Unfortunately, since the dawn of man, nobody has been able to quantify or measure pain. Pain is, ob uh, is, is, is not objective, it's subjective. Pain is not objective, it's subjective. What you call pain for somebody else is nothing. What somebody else calls pain, calls pain to you is nothing. So, or to you is okay. So, pain is not easy to quantify. Thank you. A lady said that Nikkei, they are so wonderful. Thank you, guys. Thank you uh, for your comments. Thank you, Vicentia Godwin. Doctor, to do general tests for lady, how much is it? You want to do general tests for fertility? I don't have the cost on my head now. So, you know, like I'm talking now. You know, there are many tests. We have different different packages for people trying to get pregnant. Uh, there are many packages. So once you get to the laboratory, Nikkei will show you all the packages, about five of them. You just choose which one works for you. Or you even call uh, them tomorrow or send a text or WhatsApp message to them tomorrow. And they'll reply you and give you the cost of our packages for people trying to get pregnant. And then you can know what works for you. You can give you time to visit our laboratory and when to come for your test. So for the cost of packages, I don't know. I don't know it off my mind because... There are many packages and there are different things in the packages. So they'll be able to give you the cost when you call tomorrow, okay? Guys, I need to go now. Thank you so much for joining me today. Once again, I want to say it's all a pleasure and it's all wonderful to see you all coming to watch. Thank you, Adabi, for appreciating Nike. Thank you so much for appreciating Nike. Nike is a wonderful lady. She's doing amazing work at the ATG Lab Poetry. Ezine Egyonu is saying that she was at laboratory on Saturday. The service is so good. Thank you, Ezine, for your comment. Thank you so much. 
Oluwemi is saying she want to register for a package. Um, what can how can she do it? Agg, yeah, for Agg Center is in Lagos. So can somebody help me uh, reply Oluwemi Gloria Olale? Yeah, please, please help me. So uh, there's a question here. Vivian Dick is asking about chemical pregnancy. Okay, chemical pregnancy. We'll deal with that tomorrow with uh, ectopic pregnancy by the grace of Almighty God. All right. See you all. God bless you. I love you all. I love myself too. Bye bye.